and to all of you, our Heavenly Father's children, it is good for us to be here today, amen, having our spiritual food before we go and dine um, uh, physically, and, uh, and we're blessed to be able to, uh, to, um, to dine and to have health and strength. I want to thank the Lord for Sister Deborah Thomas, a, a missionary Thomas, job well done today. I wanted, and I wanted it out there uh, on online where people can go back and see it in perpetuity. I wanted uh, the uh, initial declaration given by the father of our country. Uh, and if you notice in the entire declaration declaring um, Thanksgiving uh, a holiday, federally observed holiday. Um, if you notice with the consent of both houses of Congress, you notice there's no mentioning in the entire declaration of a turkey. Why do you bring, why, why do we bring that up? Uh, the world, the world will ruin everything if you let it. The world will ruin everything. You have, you have even sanctified people calling this day Turkey Day. This day is not set aside to honor fowl or any type of meat or any article of food. If you think that what Thanksgiving is about, it's about eating too much, you miss the point of Thanksgiving. Because if, if, that's if that's what it's all about, most Americans eat too much. They were all overweight, all at the gym, all doing something, try to work stuff off. It's not about the meal. It is about a time set aside to say to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And notice in the declaration she read, she, she read a phrase that you don't hear much. She mentioned the phrase true religion. True religion is what uh, uh, the founders, when they referred to true religion, they were referring to Christianity. For the only religion that they viewed as the true religion was Christianity. They got it right then and they're right now. The point of it is, uh, the point is not to overeat. The point is to be grateful and thankful to the Lord for all the things that the Lord has done for us. Could you imagine what would happen in this day and time if a president of the United States just read the speech publicly. You'd hear from the ACLU, you'd hear from the left, you'd hear from all kind of crazy people. Separation of church and state. He's pushing religion. He's shoving religion down our throats in America's attempt to secularize everything. But I say I push back against the secularization of our country. There is a place in this country and in this world. Not only is there a place, but there is a need to recognize, worship, and bow down to the God of the Bible. Amen. And I want to say to uh, 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 African Americans everywhere, don't let anybody... Separate you from God. I'm talking to white folk too, but uh, there is a movement afoot to make our complexion our religion. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard tell in my life. That's just stupid. That's just stupid. Something that you had absolutely no control over, your complexion. People walking around saying, I'm unapologetically black. What does that mean? What does that mean? Would you want a, a white man who is interviewing you for a job to be thinking, I'm unapologetically white? The argument of Dr. King, some of you are looking straight and making you think. The argument of Dr. King was just the opposite of that. He wanted an America where children would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Now we're arguing, forget character. Forget character, forget virtue, forget good behavior, forget the way I present myself. Just honor me because I'm black. Sound like the Nazis. Sounds like Hitler. That was their point. We're the Aryan race. We are white, so therefore we're superior. They were wrong then, and it's wrong now. 
What makes a person is that individual's choices, their behavior, how they carry themselves. And you ought to enjoy living down stereotypes. I do. When they, when they are, when there are low assumptions of me uh, because of my complexion, I enjoy proving that I'm smarter, wiser, and better than they assume that I was. There's a joy to that. I don't want to live down to the ugliest caricatures that exist concerning our race or nor any other race. Um, in the Smithsonian, they have included in a document describing what whiteness is, among the things that they call whiteness is Christianity. And if you fall for that, you're the biggest fool in existence because that's designed to, and by the way, uh, everybody's embracing it, but what you don't know is who wrote that was a white woman, a white leftist. And black folk are embracing that. That's designed to put daylight between us and the Lord. The Lord brought us through Jim Crow. The Lord brought us through slavery. The Lord brought us through. Jesus has been there for us every step of the way. And Jesus is blessing us right now. And you know what? I have not outgrown Jesus. I haven't all of a sudden, I haven't all of a sudden become above Christianity. My new God is Kellen Kaepernick or LeBron James or some athlete. And those guys are, many of these people are hypocrites. I thank God for the money that they made. I thank God for how well they're doing. But you know, a white man invented b basketball. <laughs> you got all that to say, but let me tell you, you better thank God for, for the country, thank God for the opportunities, and take advantage of them. And if you do it, the Lord will bless you. And on this day, set aside to give thanks. I give thanks to the God of the Bible. And I declare that there will be no distance between me and the Lord. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful. And among the things that I'm thankful for is that the Lord allowed me to be born in America. In a country that, as, that no matter where your station in life is, like this little black boy born out of wedlock in a poor section of town, no matter what station in life you arrive here in, if you work hard and if you apply yourself. I saw my father twice. My mama raised four boys on welfare. But if you work hard and you apply yourself and serve the Lord, you can, you can rise to heights that, you, that, that are unimaginable in this country. In many countries in the world, the, the station that you're born in, that's where you stay. If you're born third caste in a Hindu country, that's it. There is no way up and out. And uh, across the pond, if you're not a royal, you're not going to be one. Praise the Lord. But over here, over here, you can, you can get out of jail. You can do 10 and 15 years in prison and come out and apply yourself. And the next thing you know, in a few years, you're sitting on top of the world. My God, you know you ought to thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for the opportunities that we have.